Rick Riddell is our senior advisor for foreign policy and national security. And we've seen this attack on speech by the Biden administration. We saw the announcement of the disinformation governance board uh, led by Nina Jankowicz, who, again, is someone who has only a partisan history. Uh, and so they're saying they're going to bring her in to combat cartel disinformation and actual you know, Russian cyber attacks on our nation's infrastructure, like real security items, except she has no expertise in that. She's a disinformation political expert. Is that, That's how they call her. But now states are starting to speak out and take action. You know, we've already filed a FOIA. We did it within two days of this announcement to get more information about the creation of this disinformation governance board. DHS has been playing catch up, putting out two pagers on what it does do and what it doesn't do. But we've now seen a lawsuit by uh, two states, Missouri and Louisiana, against President Biden and top administration officials for colluding with the social media companies, the content platforms, to censor and suppress free speech. Now, I want to go to Rick Riddell on this right away, Rick, because, Rick, we've all experienced this. I'm glad these states are, 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 are starting to stick up for their citizens because all of us in the conservative world have experienced this kind of dethrottling or censorship by the major social media platforms. Let's be clear that there is this system now where big tech and Washington, D.C. press newsrooms and the Democrats all have a narrative. And disinformation means dissenting information, dissenting from the official Washington, D.C. line. It's very dangerous. This is what third world countries do is when they don't like the information when it's dissenting, when it's different than what they want, then they label it, uh, you know, bad information or a threat to democracy. It's really a threat to their power. And so what we need to do is, is push back on this disinformation. Dissenting information is really what it is. And thank God we have ACLJ, who is Johnny on the spot immediately filing these FOIA requests. And for people to understand is that if you don't have a legal challenge immediately, like a FOIA request, then you don't get anything done. You can talk about these issues in the media, we can complain publicly, we can complain on social media, but unless you really take them uh, legally on, you just don't get stuff done. And so I'm really thankful that ACLJ is so quick to push back and hopefully people recognize that we need support for that. Rick, the shocking aspect of this, at least to me, has been, I mean, could you imagine the circumstance where under your administration, the President Trump, when you were DNI, and you all were to have a meeting and you'd you know, maybe call your lawyers in and we'd come in and say, we're going to set up a truth board. We're going to set up a, a department, a governing board to determine what is truthful and what is information or misinformation or disinformation, and we're going to set this board up, and they will decide this. The left would be going ballistic, which we would expect, and they should. But they do it, and the Biden administration does it here, and the media barely, barely the mainstream media points that I will say Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper from CNN, and I was glad to see this, raised some serious questions with this. But from what I've seen, he's been it. But this is a grave attack on free speech. Look, we've had kind of 25, 40 years of politics where most people in the country get to sit back and watch and they get to be observers and they watch as the, the partisans in Washington fight and the media kind of uh, are the referee. Gone is that day. And I hope that people that are listening understand that you got to get off your couch. You can't just watch anymore. You every single day have to ask yourself, what are you doing to help save this country? And this attack on disinformation to support the ruling party is really a, a, a line that's been crossed. And so for anyone listening to our voice, uh, we have a new system and that new system is all of official Washington controlling the message and, and shame on us if we think that we're gonna wait for legacy media yeah to control this narrative. They're yeah. not going to do it. We have to have entities like ACLJ. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I'll address this to both of you, to, to Jordan and to Rick. So um, the Missouri Attorney General and Louisiana Attorney Generals filed suit against President Biden, top administrative 
officials for alleging, and they're alleging in it, colluding with social media giants to censor and suppress free speech. And the two attorney generals filed the suit against these individuals, and they are alleging that groups like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube are censoring, suppressing free speech, including truthful information. Um, topics like election integrity is now almost banned on these uh, platforms yep. and other topics under the guise of misinformation. And we know there's been election integrity issues, but they want to ban them. Well, like the Hunter Biden laptop story, which for, which was banned from social media, which is no longer banned from social media. The lab leak theory, which was banned from social media, which is now no longer banned from social media, as if we have to wait, Rick, for the mainstream media and the administration to say when it's okay to speak about an issue. I mean, I saw you were at the Kentucky Derby. You are with President Trump at the Kentucky Derby. If you had, you post a photo, if you had posted a video of President Trump speaking uh, and just, just a quick video and then posted that to social media, there are social media companies that may have taken that down. Would have. Look, I'm concerned that this Ministry of Truth group through Department of Homeland Security of all places. will immediately put uh, individuals who post something that they consider dissenting information uh, they are immediately going to put them on a list that maybe they can't fly. Maybe they're on the no-fly list, which is done through the FAA. Uh, maybe their ATM card is going to be frozen, and they can't use it until you take down the information that they call disinformation, dissenting information. And I think it's incredibly dangerous. We, we, the knee-jerk reaction that Jordan is talking about from the media is to shut us down. And thank God the knee-jerk reaction from ACLJ is to file suit and to get to the bottom of it. So, so Rick, the one thing that, uh, well, not the one thing, but the, a major thing that's of interest to me here and a concern to me is that of all the agencies they pick to do this, they pick the Department of Homeland Security, which as you know and I know and Jordan knows, is a law enforcement agency. It's to protect the homeland. And they give the, they have set up this, it's called a board of governance, and they're going to be working with these tech companies. So exactly what you said. I mean, I, I mean, you ran the, the you were the director of national intelligence. The idea that this would be set up, what people need to understand, it's going to go into these other government agencies. Just like when the IRS was trying to target conservatives, they went to the FEC and the DOJ. Department of Homeland Security is going to do the same thing. You can count on it, Rick. There's no question about it, and let me be very clear: there are members of the Trump administration who uh, were told when they tried to open up bank accounts that their uh, process, their application need to, needed to be reviewed. That happened in the United States of America. Remember, after January 6th, the entirety of corporate media said we were pausing on giving money to Republicans. That was their initial reaction. We're going to pause on any donations to Republicans after January 6th. This is a crisis of epic proportion. And what we need to understand is that we can no longer expect Washington, D.C., the media, the lobbyists, the newsrooms, uh, even some Republicans to defend us. We have to take people to court. Yep. Again, thank God for the ACLJ. Well, I see it this way, too. When they put the pressure on these uh, content providers and other uh, social media companies, but also Internet companies, as Rick is talking about, you can see how the consequences can become severe very quickly. So first it starts off with maybe silencing you on the, the platform. Then you can't use their payment processing. Then, you know, you can't use another, you can't use your, your Apple card uh, that to process or make a payment for, or uh, you've, you've, you've taken out some other platform because of your speech online. And the idea again, that they will pick and choose where to put the pressure, when and what to put the pressure on the social media companies and Rick, these companies, they're regulated by the federal government. Uh, they haven't been so – they have a bad track record on their own. Yep. If they've got the government telling them to do it, that's like – it gives them cover to do even more censorship. You know, right after the election when so many uh, conservatives were canceled, there was this huge movement, uh, and I saw it from billionaires and others, to say we need to have our own payment processing companies. We need to have our own cloud. We need to move away. All of that stopped – when the pressure was off. And I'm here to say, we need to have our own entities that will not cancel us. Yep. And we need to have organizations that immediately fight back with legal means. 
And that is the only solution. We can't trust these people in Washington. Shame on us for trusting them. Yeah, I am I am really grateful that we have radio stations like we have that cover us, that want to cover this information. Yep. I'm thrilled that we have uh, now the true social media, which we're on, Rumble uh, for our, our video so that we know we're not getting censored. Rick, we appreciate it.